Good morning, YouTube. Are you tired of embarrassing performance issues? Machine just spitting the white stuff out of about four feet into a sloppy wet pile on the driveway next to you. Meanwhile, your neighbor's blowing snow clear over his house. Welcome back to the frozen planet of Hoth, where it does not stop snowing. Today, we're gonna to take a look at this yard machine's 10 horsepower. 10 horsepower, 10 horsepower, 10 horsepower. 26 inch snowblower. We're gonna put an impeller kit on it. I've read a lot about them and they seem to get rave reviews. I'm just a little skeptical of what I read on the internet sometimes, folks, because if they were that great and that easy, why wouldn't they come with them from the factory? So we're gonna make one ourselves, we're gonna install it, and we're gonna see if it works any better. We've got her into the shop. We'll turn off the heater. Now that all the snow is melted off and I can actually see the bolts. First thing we're gonna to do to get to the impeller is take the chute off here. There's gonna be six nuts and six bolts all the way around here, as well as three plastic spacers. You're probably gonna to have to weld these off or soak them in oil or something, because they're probably gonna be rusted on. I replaced mine last season with some metric stainless steel hardware. Felt like blasphemy putting metric fasteners on a classic American machine, but if Jesus himself were a fastener, he'd be a 10 millimeter, because they're everywhere. Quick mental note on the spacers. They go in just like this. So they pinch around the collar, uh, just in case you forget. Next, we're going to get the chute base off the blower. Uh, we're going to have a bunch of nuts and uh, carriage bolts. There's two here, two here, and two here. And they should have nylon lock nuts on them. All right, we got off the lower chute, as well as this little bracket here. I don't want to brag or nothing, but... I only had to use a grinder to cut one of the six bolts off. That's a pretty good success rate if you live up in the Northeast. So this is the gap we're trying to fill in. That's pretty horrendous. I could fit my finger down there. So we're going to lose a lot of uh, velocity through that, at least in theory. So let's get the uh, cardboard out and we're going to make a test flap and see how that fits. And then if that works, we're going to go ahead and make one out of rubber. A little bit of safety first. Yoink. Here's the template I've cut out of cardboard. I have it sized so it goes right up against the back of the impeller and just clears this jagged metal right here. I want to get as much surface area as I can to scoop the most snow, but I also don't want the paddles getting chewed up once they're done. So I'm going to go cut this out of rubber, put two holes in it right here, come back, drill two holes in the metal impeller. Hopefully it's not too hard to drill through. And then put two nuts and bolts with Loctite on them to hold the paddle in place. This is the rubber I'll be making my paddles out of. Uh, you can use a cut up old tire or a mud flat from a truck or something. Um, but I wasn't sure what I wanted and I couldn't find anything locally. So I got this on McMaster car. It's a two inch strip of rubber. It's got good temperature resistance, good tensile strength. Uh, it's a 70 durometer, so it's pretty hard. And if it works well, then I'll put a link in the description. Got my three paddles cut out of the rubber. I just had to score it a couple times with a box cutter. Um, it was pretty hard, so hopefully that bodes well for its durability. Now we just need to mark our holes. So I'm gonna place it firmly up against the, uh, the housing here with the thought being that after rotating for a couple minutes at high speed, it will kinda self-wear and bed itself in. So I'm gonna put two holes in it right here and here. Um, I wanna space it so that I'm not up on these uh, supports here. Uh, they're just you know, weld beads or something for strengthening. I don't wanna drill through them. So I'm either gonna go here and here or here and here. Probably gonna go here and here just for a little bit more uh, rigidity. So I won't be able to see them with the paddles on, so I'm just gonna take my little silver Sharpie here and mark the gap here so I can space it out with the paddles on top. So I'm gonna drill one hole here, one hole here, straight through the rubber and just into the metal impeller enough to mark it so I know where to drill through it. Um, I may put a third hole in the middle, depends on how hard this impeller is to drill through and frankly how much I feel like doing it. Three would be better, but two may be good enough. Holes are drilled and we're ready to put the bolts through and install our paddles. Couple tips, one, put a block of wood in there while you're drilling to keep the impeller wheel from turning when you put downward pressure on it. And anytime you drill a hole into uh, regular steel and it's gonna be exposed to a lot of moisture afterwards, 
I always hit it with a can of paint. It's not cosmetic, it doesn't need to be pretty, um, but it's a layer of corrosion protection. All right, I got my paddle bolted in with a little bit of blue Loctite. Uh, there's always a debate in my head between nylon lock nuts and blue Loctite. I prefer blue Loctite just because you can take it off and then put more blue Loctite on it. You don't need to get a new nut. Nylon lock nuts really are kind of single use only. Um, so I'm gonna go with blue Loctite on these, regular stainless steel fasteners. Again, metric 10 millimeter, he's everywhere. Uh, I'm definitely gonna put a third bolt through it. I'm gonna go ahead to the other two impeller wheels, drill two holes and install the paddles and then go back around and do the third hole on each one. That way it's held in place for me. If you have a four paddle impeller like some of these have, uh, you may want to experiment with just doing every other uh, blade having a paddle. If you do all four, it can bog down the engine and it might clog. I have a three blade impeller, so there's no question here. I've got all my paddles installed, three bolts, three nuts, and three washers. And it turns her over but it's pretty tight. As you can see, I'm sweeping up all my shavings down there, so it's a pretty tight fit. So what I'm gonna do is uh, put the chute back on, and then I'm going to spray some proprietary snowblower impeller lubricant inside the impeller housing, just to help the paddles bed in, and start it up and let it run for about five minutes as, the, as they self-clear. This is the lubricant I'm gonna use. Just plain old cooking spray. I'm a little skeptical, but it was my neighbor's advice and he's from upstate New York, so he should know. Um, he also only has two teeth, so we'll see how this works out. Gonna get the auger too. And make sure I get all of the impeller housing. Get the paddles. And we're gonna fire it up and let it run. Now, I'm gonna have to drive it because I fractured my wrist and I had to weld the auger and traction controls together so I only had to use one hand. So I can't test the auger without running it. So I'm gonna go up and down the driveway a couple times uh, with the wheels tilted back and then I'll put it down and see how it blows. Well, that was a success. I thought these impeller kits were all hype, but that worked pretty well. That went at least twice as far as it used to, and it seems to have broken up the snow a lot better and shot it out um, a lot more cleanly instead of just sputtering it out like it does with slush. The paddles seem to be bedding in nicely. They make a nice tight seal against the impeller housing. Eventually those will wear in. And, um, so yeah, impeller kits work. And uh, I probably didn't address this, but the brake rotor is to compensate for the weight of the canopy. I had issues where it was just riding up on every snowbank, so bolted a brake rotor to the side. I'll be damned if I'm gonna spend 60 bucks on a snowblower weight kit that weighs 10 pounds when I have a 20 pound brake rotor in my scrap pile. Thanks for watching.